With the recent release of Pokemon Sword and Shield, trainers all around the world have their sights on collecting and catching all of the lovable pocket monsters. Although Pokemon fight in a turn-based format in their own games, many have been featured in the Super Smash Bros. series over the years. Starting with Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64, Pikachu represented the Pokemon franchise in the game's starting roster, and Jigglypuff made a surprise appearance as an unlockable character. In Melee, Mewtwo and Pichu joined the roster, with Pichu being a less viable semi-clone of Pikachu. And then Brawl removed Mewtwo and Pichu, instead adding Lucario and Pokemon Trainer. Although tied to a single character slot that can cycle between them, Pokemon Trainer consists of three playable Pokemon. Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard. These Pokemon represent the three starters in Pokemon Generation 1's Red and Blue, each at a different evolution level. Next, Smash 4 added Greninja, and Mewtwo returned as a DLC fighter. Smash 4 also removed Squirtle and Ivysaur from Pokemon Trainer, leaving Charizard as a solo fighter. Smash Ultimate features the largest assortment of Pokemon in any Smash game, reuniting Pichu with the existing Pokemon from Smash 4 and returning Squirtle and Ivysaur to Pokemon Trainer. Ultimate also introduced Incineroar as a newcomer Pokemon for the game. Counting Trainer as three characters, Smash Ultimate actually boasts a total of 10 playable Pokemon, making Pokemon the most represented video game franchise in Smash as determined by playable characters. With so many Pokemon to choose from, which one will make you a Pokemon Master in Smash? We'll find out in just a bit, but first, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com for tier lists, character guides, and access to top coaches through our Play With Pros platform. We've also got pro courses with players like MKLeo and Zero. Now let's take a quick look at what each Pokemon has to offer in Ultimate's competitive meta. Pikachu is a small and fast character that racks up damage quickly with extended combos and takes stocks via explosive edgeguarding and kill confirms. Pikachu can pressure opponents from afar and bait out defensive options using his Thunder Jolt projectile multiple times. His quick multi-hit aerials are perfect for catching jumps, and their low landing lag and auto-cancel windows let Pikachu get away with whiffing aerials more than most characters. Smash Ultimate adds a spike hitbox to his down air, making Pikachu's already amazing edgeguard potential even deadlier. Although Pikachu's aerials have low knockback, he can set up KOs on stage with up throw thunder or nair into down or up smash, and his dash attack and forward smash are also fairly safe KO options. Jigglypuff is a very floaty character with multiple jumps and crazy fast airspeed. It'll spend most of the time in the air, weaving in and out of the opponent's range. Jigglypuff can drag opponents off stage with its forward and neutral airs, demolishing characters with poor recoveries. Update version 6.0.0 also gave Jigglypuff two new ways to combo into its deadly down special, Rest, giving it a scary low and mid percent kill confirm. Despite these strengths, Puff lacks range and is the second lightest character in the game, flying off the screen without taking too much damage. Although rumored as a joke character addition in Melee, Pichu is very capable in Ultimate. He can be described as a glass cannon version of Pikachu, racking up damage very quickly through combos, taking early stocks with high knockback on moves like back air and forward smash, and going super deep off stage for edge guards. The catch is that Pichu literally damages himself whenever he uses an electric-based attack, he has low range, and he's even lighter than Jigglypuff, making him the lightest character in the game. Don't get me wrong, he's, he's really good, but trying to survive with him takes years off your life. Mewtwo uses his large range and strong KO power to pressure shields and obliterate opponents in the air or off stage. His tail reaches very far, making his down tilt a safe combo starter and his back air an excellent move to carry opponents to the blast zone. His shadow ball can be charged to become a large projectile with KO power, and his forward air is a fast KO option to be respected at all times, along with his up throw, that takes stocks around 120%. Mewtwo is surprisingly light, however, and he struggles to land and escape this advantage. Lucario has somewhat of a basic brawler moveset, but possesses a unique playstyle thanks to his aura mechanic and aura sphere charging hitbox. 
Lucario's knockback gets significantly stronger as his damage percent increases, making the concept of a lead ambiguous when fighting him. His neutral B, Aura Sphere, is a chargeable projectile similar to Mewtwo's Shadow Ball, only Aura Sphere actually has a hitbox while charging. This charging hitbox can be comboed into Up Smash or an Aerial to take super early stocks if Lucario is a high percent himself. Nevertheless, Lucario is pretty slow and can struggle to escape combos in disadvantage. Like I said earlier, we'll be looking at Pokemon Trainer as three characters in this video, starting with Squirtle. Squirtle is very small and has the best combo potential of the three trainer Pokemon. His size and frame data make him very strong in neutral, and he excels at whiff punishing. Although Squirtle can struggle to close out stocks, his smash attacks have pretty low lag and surprising knockback relative to his kid in general. Ivysaur keeps opponents out with his Razor Leaf projectile, and is one of the most explosive, like, literally explosive, advantage states of any character in the game, not even just of the Pokemon. Ivysaur can use down throw, Razor Leaf, or forward air to set up for up air juggles. Once you're above Ivysaur, his huge up air hitbox becomes a major threat as it can take stocks very early, and should you attempt to escape his up air range diagonally, you'll find yourself lined up at the sweet spot of his Vine Whip. Ivysaur's Vine Whip up special is also very strong and can be comboed into as well. Last but not least, Ivysaur's down air is among the largest spike hitboxes in the game. Even after it was dirt! Effortlessly edgeguarding most recoveries without even needing to go off stage. On the downsides, Ivysaur is slow on the ground and in the air, and its neutral is lacking, besides for Razor Leaf camping. Charizard is the biggest, heaviest, yet fastest running Pokemon in the trainer set. His deadly out of shield game makes him terrifying to deal with at kill percents, as does the immense range and power of his back air. Charizard's huge hitbox and poor frame data make him struggle very much to land and escape combos, however. Greninja is a very fast Pokemon with a super low profile hitbox and an amazing whiff punish playstyle. He has one of the best dash attacks in the game, allowing him to swoop in for fast punishes on almost any whiff. His dash attack along with his down tilt, neutral air, and grab are also combo starters that can lead to up air juggles, back air edge guards, and KOs from his disjointed fair and up smash. Greninja can struggle with pressure as his out of shield options are poor and he lacks reliable anti-air options in neutral. Finally, Incineroar relies on various grabs to deal tons of damage and take early stocks. His Revenge Down Special is a counter that powers up his next attack and can be stacked. Combining this with his Side B Command Grab, Incineroar can deal insane amounts of damage in a single hit. Sadly, Incineroar is very slow and has an exploitable and generally poor recovery, easily succumbing to edge guards. So which Pokemon is the best? Well. Factoring in tournament results and the character's overall viability, who's the Pokemon? It's Pikachu. You guys, uh, you guys remember that meme? It's uh, it's really 12 years old now. I'm sorry. It, it's it's Pikachu. Pikachu has an amazing matchup spread, notably among top tier matchups, and ESAM's multiple top eight placings demonstrate this. His safe neutral, perpetual combos, and relentless edge guarding make Pikachu a bona fide top tier and our pick for the best Pokemon in Smash Ultimate. Pikachu wins. Going down from there, we have Pichu taking the number two spot, Greninja coming in at number three, Squirtle at number four, Ivysaur at number five, Lucario at number six, Charizard at number seven, Jigglypuff at number eight, Mewtwo at number nine, and Incineroar at number ten. If we were counting Pokemon Trainer as a single character, it definitely would have made a top three spot, because these characters are much better with the ability to compensate for each other's weaknesses. We also gave Jigglypuff a higher spot thanks to the recent buffs, but we'll have to wait and see just how significant the changes are when results show up. Who do you think is the best Pokemon in Smash Ultimate? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to ProGuides and click the notification bell for more videos like this one.